Alrighty, 8.4 human population and carrying capacity. Um, so we watched that Don't Panic video, which was telling us that uh, human population is actually slowing down in its growth uh, overall. And a lot of countries um, that we think of as exploding in population are actually turning their trends, uh, turning their trends around pretty dram dramatically. Um, but a lot of these comics uh, seem to have that old view that um, the world's population is still just going to continue increasing and then we're screwed. Um, but really, that's not the whole story because we know that it all depends on the ecological footprint um, and that that ecological footprint is really going to help us determine whether human populations are within their carrying capacity. And if we have a big old footprint like we do in the U.S., there's going to be less people. Um, but if we live more sustainably, the Earth can actually sustain all of us. Um, so carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals um, of a species that that the uh, ecosystem can support. Um, so we can see this blue line here is sort of representing the carrying capacity at different times in the season. Um, you might wonder why that would change. Well, think about the spring and the summer and all the food sources for a deer, right? Not a lot of leaves for them to eat in the winter. Um, so that's why carrying capacity drops dramatically. Um, these are some of those factors um, that could affect carrying capacity. Um, so it's possible to estimate the carrying capacity for different species. Um, it's even more hard to do that for humans than it is for any other species because we're like a lot more complicated than other species. Um, we can import and export resources between ecosystems or like from the other side of the planet or people are talking about importing uh, resources from other planets um, or other objects in space. Um, we can also find uh, other resources to substitute. You know, we're like super adaptable. Um, we can start burning coal and then or start burning wood and then substitute that for coal and then substitute the coal for solar power. Um, and that technology will like you know, really impact the sustainability of our future. As we develop new technologies that make our energy more efficient, then the whole planet will be more sustainable. Um, and then you got a great comic again where this guy brings up some excellent examples of, of how we could live more sustainably, regardless of what the human population is. Um, and then we just have, you know, a graph that's not really thinking about the full picture, how the on the ground fertility rates, how on the ground birth rates are actually changing in a lot of these places. Um, that ecological footprint is just the amount of resources that you're using, the land and water, um, the space, uh, as well as you know the carbon. There's also your carbon footprint. There's also your water footprint. Um, and these are really holistic viewpoints, right? So that's why they're asking all the questions about your home life and driving to work and all that type of stuff, what types of foods you eat, et cetera. Um, so one of your... Um, and uh, one of your skills and applications might be to discuss how certain activities can differ between less economically developed and more economically developed countries. Um, so how are they getting their uh, food sources? Is it coming from small little farms or are they you know, buying um, you know, mega factory farm grocery foods? We haven't actually done the agriculture unit yet, um, which you could think for example, um, how they're disposing of waste, right? Um, so in the U.S., we're sorting out our recycling, um, and then when we're in Malawi, they're like, oh, here, we'll take care of your waste for you, and they just burn it in a little pile. Uh, we were a little upset by that, but um, the ecological footprint will vary significantly depending on um, where you live and what type of lifestyle you lead. Um, so you can see um, the average um, ecological footprint for uh, various countries here. Um, and then other example questions might be to outline and justify which activities contribute the most to differences in the ecological footprint. Um, degradation of the environment together with the consumption of finite, finite resources is expected to limit human population growth. Uh, there's also a lot of other things that limit human population growth, uh, such as education programs um, and increasing um, you know, the level of income uh, increasing, you know, um, ability to have contraceptives. There's a lot of other options 
um, that are actively helping to curve human population growth. Um, but if we aren't able to curb that, um, then nature will curve it for us um, with things like famines and disease. You know, disease spreads easily in really dense populations. Um, so a nice little graphic of how carrying capacity and populations might work. Um, this one says human population, but it could be any population of organisms. As they exceed carrying capacity, um, that overshoot will eventually be dealt with by, by a population crash. Um, a lot of species um, that are S selected species like we are will actually slow down their reproduction as they approach this carrying capacity, as we are doing, um, as opposed to other G selected, those really rapid reproducers um, tend to have much more boom and bust type of scenarios where their populations explode and then crash and then explode and then crash. Um, some applications and skills would be to evaluate the application of carrying capacity to local and uh, global human populations, um, to compare and contrast the ecological footprint of different countries, um, and then to evaluate how environmental value systems impact the ecological footprints of individuals and populations. Um, some connections for international mindedness and theory of knowledge, theory of knowledge um, and as always, a shout out to Mr. Kramer.